Hi, I'm Liz and I lead Net Impact. At Net Impact, we envision the workplace of the future is teeming with employees who want to bring their desire to make a positive social environmental impact into the workplace. This is the disruption I'm going to speak to you about today. This is about people like Jeslyn, who figured out a way to help her company recycle more fiberglass. People like Kristen, who started a healthy school lunch company. People like Emily, who found a way to reduce carbon emissions in data centers. And people like Lathan and Anna, who traveled with Pepsi to Ghana to work on water issues. And this isn't just a fringe trend. Recent net impact and Rutgers University research shows that over 70% say making a difference through their job is an important life goal. And almost half of students will take a pay cut for that kind of job. Today, I'm going to give you some ideas about how you can harness that interest in making a difference in your workplace. And let me warn you, this, uh, these ideas are not going to be the low-hanging fruit. I'm not going to tell you guys to turn off the lights when you leave the office. This group is beyond that. So my three ideas. Idea one, convene the enthusiasts, the diehards. These are your employees who are going to rally the troops throughout the organization. Idea two, make it visible. Do something that employees can see and touch and really get their hands around. And idea three, book a C-level spokesperson who's going to show buy-in from the very top. So first idea, those diehards. These are your influencers from Malcolm Gladwell's The Tipping Point. These are your employees who are going to show up to work early, work during their lunch hour, and stay late, all to help you start a social revolution in your company. Get these employees to find other employees like them. You can do something formal, like start an employee affiliate group, or informal, like a, just a brown bag lunch discussion. Back in 2007, eBay started their green team with 40 employees. Today, their green team has over 2,500 employees all over the world, almost 15% of their, their company. Once you've gathered those employees together, you want to do something visible, like they did here at Burt's Bees at their dumpster dive. Now, you don't have to have a big budget or a formal program, but it has to be something that employees can see, can touch, can smell, or maybe even wear. At Levi Strauss, what they did is challenge their employees to wear their same pair of jeans for five days in a row without washing them. This saved water and saved energy. Employees loved this. Over 1,000 employees across the globe participated. They sent in over 10,000 pictures in Instagram and Flickr, and they were also judged by their fashion sense, as you can see here, with their tops and accessories. Now, why did this work? One, it fit with the Levi's culture. It was fun and creative. Two, it focused on a Levi's core product, the jeans. And three, it was really about as tangible as you can get. Another example, AMD challenged their employees to make something out of recyclable and reusable material. Meet the winner, Reclaim Man. Reclaim Man stood in the lobby of their office, had his picture taken with over 150 employees, and raised a lot of awareness about the company's recycling and conservation efforts. Final tip, engage your, your CEOs. This is CEO of REI, Sally Jewell, at an employee volunteer event. Now, maybe you're cringing at the idea of your CEO in shorts and pruning gear, but it doesn't have to be that extreme. What you want to do is find a way where they can be comfortable in front of your employees on this issue. Luckily, over 90% of CEOs already agree that sustainability is a critical business imperative. Your job is to figure out how to get them visible, whether it's an employee event, in a speech, or in an email to employees. And if all else fails in convincing the CEO, what you want to do is use the kids. Kids get it. This is their world that's in trouble. This is 10-year-old Mia Hansen of California. She started an online petition to ask Jamba Juice to stop using styrofoam cups in their stores. She gathered over 100,000 signatures and got herself a call from the Jamba Juice CEO. So these three tips, convene the diehards, make it visible, book a C-level spokesperson. That will help you start a quiet or maybe not so quiet revolution in your workforce. And the benefits to this are immense. One benefit is higher employee engagement. Employee engagement is not just about employee well-being, meaning employees are going to like their job better and probably stick around longer. It's also about positive financial outcomes. Studies have shown that companies with higher levels of employee engagement have over three times the operating margins as companies with lower levels of employee engagement. Another benefit is cost savings. Companies are saving hundreds of million dollars a year from innovations around energy efficiency, reducing waste, and reducing packaging. Last year, 3M saved over $100 million in employee innovations around energy efficiency. The final reason why you should engage your employees around social environmental issues in the workplace is that the kind of issues we're talking about here are really hard, 
climate change, poverty, human rights, it takes time to solve these kinds of issues. What if we as a society made that time? What if we as a workplace gave just 2% of our time under an hour a week to solving these kinds of issues? That's, that would be in the US alone over 5 billion hours a year, which is twice as many hours as it took us to figure out how to send a man to the moon. Think of what else we could figure out with that time. How can you be a disruptor and go back to your office and think about how you can use your employees to tackle tough issues like these? Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.